Today I'm doing a little bit of work on closed captioning for a uh, project for one of my clients today and I thought I'd share my workflow with you guys here. Um, so if you take a look at my desktop here, you see I've, I've set up uh, Adobe Captivate a little bit differently and this is actually one of the advantages of going to what some people like to call the pro workspace. Uh, this has to do with uh, going into your preferences and selecting the ability to enable custom workspaces and undocking. Of course, you'll need to restart Captivate for that to take an effect, but what it then allows you to do is to create special work workspaces that uh, accommodate your needs depending on what you're working on. So in this particular instance, I'm just working within the slide notes. I don't need anything else. I could even go a step further and eliminate all of these panels and save that as part of my closed captioning workflow. Uh, but of course I do need the slide notes in front of me. That's important. Uh, over on my other monitor, you can, uh, I'll just show it to you briefly here. I've got the storyboard for this particular project. It's in a little bit different format. I, I prefer to do my storyboards differently, but again, you know, the clients will provide you uh, their storyboard in different forms. And one of the things that I also like to use is Grammarly. So what I do is I'll copy and paste the text for the narration, even if the narration is already recorded, and I'll paste it into Grammarly just to make sure I've got a comma in the right place, just to make sure I'm using, uh, you know, the correct spelling of all the keywords and stuff like that. The only thing I have to watch for is being a Canadian. Uh, it, Grammarly knows that I'm Canadian and uh, it tries to change the spelling to Canadian spelling. And of course, if my client is from the United States, I've got to keep that in mind. So, but it's not a, not a huge deal here. So, let me take you through my process here. At, in this case here, I'm gonna actually go to my timeline and you'll see that there's audio narration already placed on the timeline here. And what I like to do is I like to trim it a little bit. I like to make sure that there's a little bit of blank spot, no audio at the beginning and no audio at the end. There has been experiences in the past where when you publish an e-learning project and the audio fills the entire length of the slide, uh, both on the uh, preceding slides and the subsequent slides, sometimes there can be some problems with that. So what I like to do is I like to edit the audio first of all and just cut out any extra audio at the beginning and at the end as well. So I'm just gonna chop those off, just gonna cut those. Click on save and close. Alternatively, I could just go straight to the closed captioning, but there is something I wanna do here. I'm gonna position my playhead at half a second on the timeline. And then I'm gonna use the keyboard shortcut Control P. And what that does is it positions the uh, slide audio to start at where the playhead currently is. And this is useful to make sure that I've got a little space before and a little space afterwards. And it also tends to make the audio sound a little more natural. So the next thing I'm going to do is uh, switch over to slide notes. And I'm going to press this little icon here. This is the closed captioning icon. And like I said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the audio narration and this is a short one. I'm copying it and I'm pasting it into um, pasting it into uh, Grammarly real quick and just making sure there's no issues uh, with spelling or comma use or punctuation use. And once I've got that all in place here, I just start to position. I copy from Grammarly. The nice thing about Grammarly, when you copy from Grammarly, you're copying clean text. So you don't have to worry about formatting coming over from uh, Microsoft Word or some other pro word processor. So I just click on the add closed caption icon here, and then I paste in the narration for that point. And then I can play a little bit of it and see where the next uh, next uh, item will be. 
And I try to keep this down to as short a line as possible, um, even if it means breaking a sentence in half, because of course uh, I don't want too much closed captioning on the screen at any one time. So again, I just press that uh, add closed caption icon and now I can paste in the additional text and continue that process here. So I just listen a little bit. I pause where where the the current closed captioning text ends and uh, copy the next bit of text over and we'll just click the add closed caption icon there paste in the rest play a little bit more sometimes you might have to move the um, the marker or reposition your playhead to make sure that uh, it's all set up here. And I'm just going to copy the last line of text and we'll paste that in. And I like to hit save first. You can hit close and it will prompt you to save, but I like to make sure that everything gets accepted okay. Sometimes Captivate will have trouble with certain um, text and it just make sure it goes through. So I'm going to hit save. Everything's good to go. Hit close. And now I have all my closed captioning for this particular slide of this project. If you thought this video was useful, please share it with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, consider hiring me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that helps you achieve your business goals. Visit my website at CaptivateTeacher.com, follow me on Twitter at PaulWilsonLD, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.